blood clots and anoxaparin in pregnancy. What is venous thromboembolism? Venous thromboembolism, or VTE, is a broad term used to describe deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. DVT is a condition where blood clots form in the deep veins of your leg, thigh or pelvis. Less commonly, these can form in other parts of your body too. When part of this clot breaks off and travels to your lungs, it is called a pulmonary embolism, or PE. Both these conditions are debilitating and pulmonary embolism can be fatal. Why is VTE important in pregnancy? Your body changes in many ways in order to accommodate a growing baby. One of these changes is making your blood more sticky. Pregnant women are five times more likely to develop blood clots compared to non-pregnant women. This risk is 20 times higher for women in the six weeks following childbirth. This can have consequences for both you and your baby. There are other risk factors which make it more likely for some pregnant women to develop blood clots. These include smoking, being overweight, immobility, dehydration, active infections, and a personal or family history of blood clots. Medical conditions such as antiphospholipid syndrome, active inflammatory bowel disease and arthritis also increase the risk. Being pregnant with twins or conceiving via IVF are other important risk factors. At your booking appointment, your midwife will go through your history in detail and assess your risk factors. This will guide us in managing your individual risk. These risks will be reviewed later in your pregnancy and after you give birth. How to identify VTE? Symptoms of a DVT include pain and swelling of one leg. This may also turn red in colour and be painful to touch. With a PE, you might notice chest pain or shortness of breath, which is worse than what you might notice in general pregnancy. You might also cough up some blood, feel very unwell or collapse. If you experience any of these symptoms, you should seek urgent advice. If you are 20 weeks pregnant or more, you should contact the maternity advice line. Before this time, you should contact NHS 111 or dial 999. If you are booked at City Hospital, you can contact the maternity advice line from 16 weeks onwards. In the hospital, you will be seen by doctors who will assess you and order special scans if they suspect a blood clot. How can I reduce my risk of developing a VTE? There are different ways of managing your VTE risk. Keeping active throughout your pregnancy and drinking plenty of water is very beneficial. If you are overweight or smoke, losing weight and stopping smoking will significantly reduce your risk. Compression stockings encourage the movement of blood in your body and help reduce the risk of clots. Finally, if your risk factors add up to a high score, we might recommend an injection to thin your blood as well. The duration for the use of this injection varies depending on how many risk factors you have and whether you need it before or after childbirth. What is anoxaparin and is it safe to use? Anoxaparin is a blood thinner which blocks the activity of some blood clotting proteins. It is an injection which is given into the fatty layer under your skin. The dose of anoxaparin depends on your body weight and the reason as to why you need these injections. When used to prevent the blood clot, it is usually given once a day as a smaller dose. You will be prescribed a higher dose if you need treatment for a blood clot. Regardless of the dose, anoxaparin is safe to use in pregnancy because it does not cross the placenta and does not affect your baby. After birth, it's safe to use during breastfeeding. The duration of the injection will depend on your individual risk score. You may need up to 10 days of inje injections. If you are deemed to have a higher risk, then a six-week course will be advised. What are the side effects? It's normal to see some bruising around these injection sites so make sure to inject a slightly different area each day. As you get further along in your pregnancy, it might become more difficult to inject in the middle of your abdomen. Consider using the sides of your abdomen or your thighs for injecting the medication. Some women find applying ice to the area for three to five minutes before injecting reduces irritation and bruising. A small number of women may experience a rash on their skin after using an oxaparin. If this happens, please contact the hospital. 
How to administer an oxaparin. An oxaparin comes in syringes filled with the right dose for you. Your prescription will also be accompanied by a sharp spin. The medicine needs to be injected into the fat and the easiest place to do this is across your abdomen. You'll be shown how to give this injection when you collect your medication. Before giving the injection, make sure you have washed your hands with soap and water. Ensure you have your injection and the sharp spin and are sat in a comfortable position. Carefully remove the cap protecting the needle and make sure not to touch the sterile needle. Hold the syringe halfway down the barrel in your dominant hand. With your non-dominant hand, pinch about an inch of tummy skin and hold it between your thumb and index finger. Ensure this fold of skin is held up until the medicine has been injected through. Insert the needle at a right angle to the skin, ensuring it goes into the skin fold. Then push on the syringe plunger steadily to dispense all the medication. Release the skin fold and withdraw the needle at the same angle that it went in. It's important to correctly dispose of sharps in the special bin provided. Do not put your hand into the bin once you've thrown something inside as this puts you at risk of becoming injured. Once your bin is full, take it to your GP and request a new one. When do I stop these injections? If you experience vaginal bleeding, stop the injections and contact the hospital immediately for advice. These injections do not cause bleeding on their own, but if you have bleeding due to other, other reasons, the injection may make the bleeding heavier. If you think you're going into labour, do not take the injections as this may affect your choice of pain relief during labour. Contact the hospital for advice through the maternity advice line. You cannot have epidural or spinal anaesthesia for 12 hours following the small dose injections and for 24 hours if you're on the higher dose. If you see another doctor or a dentist during pregnancy, it's important to inform them that you're taking an oxaparin. If you have any questions about VTE or anoxaparin injections, please contact your community midwife or GP.